Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we are looking at space weather, including a multi-shot view of a solid CME that released this morning. We'll also give some in-house updates, see proto-Earth building blocks and twin studies out this last week on the top of the sky. We're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, where we find the last day was relatively calm but still had its small pops. No significant flares or eruptive events aimed towards the Earth. Biggest event goes off the right side there. It is the equatorial sunspot group that got mean looking, but never fired our way. Tremendous plasma push there visible as well in the red 304 angstrom view. And I'll flip that on its side to see the full breadth look at that plasma in 171 angstroms. Ionized helium followed by ionized iron in those last two shots of the event. Sunspots up next, and folks, the story is largely unchanged. Virtually no growth or development in these incoming active regions. They really lack the complexity to make bigger solar flares, but they could morph today and I'll have eyes there as well. But a little break in flaring is expected the next 24 to 36 hours at least. Folks, this is the corner of my garage, and that pallet of boxes is the last pallet of your pre-ordered books. It began as seven pallets, and if you haven't received your copy yet, it's still in here. I'll be signing it in the next couple of days and then shipping it out to you. We have almost got them all, and we appreciate your patience. Up first in the articles today, excellent geological study on the oldest Earth rocks and asteroid composition. They discovered that a key assumption about our planet might be wrong. They thought that the first major meteor impact during cooldown totally reorganized Earth's chemistry. They say it was about the size of Mars. But that may not be true. Early rocks found with the original isotopic composition uncontaminated. The beginning of our planet may be about to get a rewrite. And our top story today is this, the twin articles out of different AGU journals this last week, describing a long-term change and definitive trend in the ionosphere and thermosphere, the top of the sky. The changes they see are blamed on greenhouse gases in both papers, but it's not the first time they've tried that. Last time, they had to backtrack because it's truly the sun that dominates the top of the sky, mediated by Earth's magnetic field. Now that was for the mesospheric echoes. I'm sure a bunch of you remember that one. But those are even lower in the atmosphere than both of these papers are targeting, which means the areas these papers are targeting are even more driven by the sun and Earth's magnetic field, which also means that the changes they're identifying are pole shift driven, just like the other ones. Folks, tickets to the winter tour are available. It is a four-hour masterclass on surviving the coming disaster event on Earth. Five cities in five months. Get your tickets at the link below. And we only have a few events left this year at Observer Ranch. Self-offense training on November 1st after the Halloween event. Observer Speed Dating 2.0, the 7th and the 8th of November. Come find your prepper princess or post-apocalyptic warlord. Film premiere in the last Pole Shift Conference of the Year, middle of the month. Come out for the end of our rookie season, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.